Welcome to chapter 4 again, to the MCS exam. Now we are looking at the core activity B from the CIMA to implement senior management decisions. Now you need to answer the following ICANN questions. For example, project management, explaining key project personnel and selecting tools to managing project and select financing sources, for example, long-term debt finance, short-term debt finance, and even the equity financing options, and the characteristics of high-performing teams. Now, I've summarized all of these ICANN questions into three sections in the chapter four of our study there. Firstly, just a recap from the CIMA E2 syllabus area about the project management. Now, doing a project, which means we are doing something new, we need to understand that project has a fixed duration, which means a start and end. And within there, we've got the standards required, what sort of things that we're going to be achieving, and also the budget, which means we need to allocate the resources in, including the timing resource, including the money resource and the human resources. Now, of course, We've got certain constraint, which means what may go wrong, that's important. Quality may go wrong, cost may be overrun, and also time may further need to be extended. Now, we also have got uh, different software and so on, and we need to plan, we need to put them into the uh, project charter, or we can call this as a project initiation document, or I can call it as the project charter. The reason is, we need to submit this document about what we need to do, how we're going to be doing about it, why we're going to be doing it, of course why it's like the business case, because we can have a lot of returns from doing this project, and who should be responsible for it, and so on. So what why, how, who, we summarise these together into something called the project initiation document. And of course, we'll need to submit these to the project sponsor, usually be the board of directors, would be uh, saying OK, that we can go ahead with the project. We've got a business case, which means why we're going to be doing that project, and different project stakeholders involved which manage the uh, relationships on each of the uh, member in the project team very carefully, so for example, including the, uh, yes, we can talk about project structures, but not very important there, but most likely the project manager, okay? That stakeholder will be, will be responsible for a day-to-day -day running of the project, and then the project customer will be using the final results of our project. Uh, so for example, if you are developing a particular uh, accounting software that the finance department will certainly be the project customer and so on. Project sponsor will be the uh, project champion making decisions and managing conflict and making sure it goes in the right strategic direction way, so it would be the board of directors. Now, you only need to know, yes, a few ideas behind it and even the managing risks, okay, properly by planning it properly, performing the sensitivity analysis, the, what, what the key variables may go wrong, and so on and so forth, using real-time monitoring from a big data. Now, all this stuff, I would say that it will be a the, uh, theoretical stuff, okay? but uh, in the case study exam, more likely you will need to apply the basic stuff to the questions. So, sort of potential project cases for the flat or maybe to develop sustainability program, reducing carbon footprint, for example, green building practices, renewable energy adoptions. So sometimes, yes, digital transformation for tenant services, and even expanding into new market, partnering with other colleges and so on. So these are the potential projects that we may be considering that. But the most important thing from my perspective is to go through the past exams 
that how project management may have been tested in the past. So for example, in 2021, the, the exam link team asks you about the recommended with reasons how the key phases of the project should be managed. So for example, the implementation phase that we've got risk management processes in turn. So you need to detail them. So what sort of management processes, so for example, how we're going to be uh, reducing that risk how we're going to be transferring that risk to third parties, for example, buying insurance and so on, and to make sure our costs are not overrun. So you need to tell the exam link team about that. So making sure that you focus on the exam question and to position yourself as a consultant, and you need to deal with that challenge. The second question, okay, identify key matters that our project partner must achieve with the reason. So for example, we need to have a clear objective, engaging with stakeholders, allocating our resources, including budget and managing risks properly. So linking back to a case, that's very important there. And even the question three, for example, identify, evaluate the key project management issues associated okay, with a new product. So yes, the issues, we need to understand there might be challenges related to the technical stuff, the supply chain issues that we need to work with the suppliers and how to choose them. So these are sort of things, okay, uh, and so on and so forth. And you can read the past exams, how this topic have been tested. So as you can see, the, the project management nowadays, the exam questions will be testing students from a practical point of view, okay, so uh, asking you about, okay, what sort of stakeholders are involved, how to manage their conflict, uh, so uh, what are the key issues, what are the key risks and so on, so make sure that you throw away your theoretical stuff, but to have a mindset that, okay, this is something that we need to get it done, so what problems have we arisen if you're told about the actual problems have been arising from the unseen case, how are you going to be dealing with that? Okay, so just to make sure that you provide sensible, not 100% correct answers, but very sensible answers to the examining team, and you will score the full marks for that. Section two uh, in the core activity number B area is all about the long-term finance. Now, in terms of where does your money come from, in terms of long term, which means you can repay the money back more than one year. For more than one year, like the equity finance using the IPO, Initial Public Offering. However, our company is already a public listed company already, so it's highly likely, subsequently, we may be issuing uh, shares through the right issues, which means we are selling additional shares at discounted prices to our existing shareholders. But um, when we analyse, for example, the gearing ratio of this company, so not just for long-term debt to equity, it will be a relatively low compared to our competitor. Uh, at the same time, our interest cover ratio is a bit high. So if I were you, is that I would like to suggest to the examining team that Having the right issue is okay, but we can also think about to issue additional long-term debt, okay? To increasing up your long-term debt to equity ratio will be absolutely fine there because you've got ability to doing that. So pay the extra interest. Of course, finding the potential investors to buy your shares through the private placement, from my perspective, is not particularly suitable in this industry. Looking for venture capital, which means the venture capitalist firms, to providing you with money, but uh, they will also share a large proportion of your business. From my perspective, it's not particularly viable in this industry as well. But in the exam, the, I notice a very interesting fact is that the examining team will always tell you to explain, to appraise, and to evaluate something. However, when I mark other scripts from other professional bodies regarding a narrative part, it seems that 
they would like to pretend themselves of making decisions directly for this company. So, for example, I want you to analyze the potential uh, financing options for me. Now, students also may say that, okay, I think this is not okay. I think this is okay. I prefer this one, not this one. You're directly making decisions on my behalf, but not persuading me. So make sure they understand that at the management level and even at the strategic level, you will need to analyze a lot of things, okay, uh, for the management. And of course, of course, in your bottom of your arm, so you can make a conclusion of if you're the management team member, so what sort of options do you like to choose? However, they are not simply saying that private placement is rubbish, but you should say there'll be pros and cons of the private placement, and then you move on. So you always use that approach. Don't just to make decisions on behalf of the management team members. Now, regarding the sources of long-term debt finance, for example, uh, where you can issue bonds and paying uh, the fixed interest, and of course, the exam question in the past regarding this topic has asked you about the characteristic or the implications of a long-term debt finance to the business. Of course, one of the characteristics will always be we can predict how much cash to pay in the near future because the interest rate is fixed there. Yes, we can arrange bank loan from the bank. It can also refer to as the current gearing ratio and even the interest cover ratio for the company as well. We can also lease the asset rather than buy it outright. We can save the initial cash flows, which is better for our liquidity. Because you can always say to the examining team that referring back to the seasonal turnover, uh, the business is currently suffering uh, so leasing the asset rather, rather than buying it outright may save us additional cash. In the 2.3 in your note, okay, also on the screen from a similar syllabus, all about the yield to maturity. It's all about the yield curve. Now, the yield curve looks like this. Firstly, the yield to maturity or YTM or call it as the IRR, as the effective return which means the real return, there will be many names that you can use them interchangeably. On the x-axis will be the time. Usually, the normal yield curve will look like this, upward sloping. The reason is, we would expect the economy to go well in the future. At the same time, according to the liquidity preference theory, they can also say that uh, the yield curve looks like this because for the longer period of time, the higher the risk that a capital provider will need to suffer. And therefore, they will compensate for the level of risks that may be suffering by the higher returns they will get by charging you higher interest expense. Now, however, in this exam, is the management case study. It's not about the theoretical stuff. So you can directly ignore all these bits and pieces if I were you, but I will focus on the applications for that. So for example, if you see the yield curve looks like this, you will expect the short-term interest will be relatively low. You will expect the long-term interest will be relatively high. So if this is the case then, why not to consider increasing the, for example, the short-term loan? It seems to be the short-term interest is relatively low there. And of course, you can make certain purchases, for example, your inventories or allowing credit to your customers and so on. But uh, yes, you take on the short-term loan to fund that gap before you receive the money from your final customer. But from my perspective, the yield to maturity I cannot think of any potential exam question that will be applicable to a flat tool company. So you can skip that if you're not sure about it. But uh, you can also think about it. The yield curve would be used for financial managers to assess the potential financing options for the business. Now, the long-term finances scenarios for a flat tool company, yes, 
we may be thinking about the equity finance for major expansion into the business, for example, sharing our profit with the new shareholders. But if I were you, again, as I said before, that we are so profitable. So I will not opt for the equity financing option for a business. But still, I will have to demonstrate to the examining team if I'm asked about that, to show the examining team that the pros and cons of each of the option in place. For the property development for long-term debt and the private placement for selective investment, but highly unlikely, and so on and so forth. Now, how this topic has already, has already been tested, I'm sorry, uh, in the past, for example, the question one here from a past exam, identifying the characteristics of the debt, so you need to tell the exam link team about the theoretical part. So for example, making the cash flows more predictable because we are paying interest and no ownership by illusion, unlike that we need to share profit with the shareholders. But uh, here will be the debt holders. We need to pay them debt and the principal amount. Second one, second question, recommend with reasons how the contract investment should be funded. And therefore, yes, we can provide a variety of funding options, including receiving money in advance or using trade payables, showing the pros and cons of each option would be very, very important key there. Another question, should the investment be funded with debt or equity? Again, you're telling the exam team about the pros and cons of each option under debt or equity, so make sure that you're ready for that. In a section three in the core activity number B from E2 syllabus, you need to tell the examining team about teams when not they are high performing. You need to know firstly there will be team development phases, okay, from forming, which means they're quite polite at the very first start, but they will disagree with each other as they know more about each other's opinion, but they will be selected, one of them will be selected as leader, and then during the norming stage, they start to cooperate with each other, and all the things will be uh, agreed, including the uh, punishment and reward systems and so on. You also need to know about the team roles as well, so for example, coordinating okay, among team members, challenging the team members to improve, having the specialists, having the special knowledge, and so on. Now, a team doesn't really have to be a lot of people involved. Yes, it can be a few of them, will be absolutely fine there. So a person that can be a coordinator, at the same time can be a specialist, will be absolutely fine there within the team. Now, you also need to know about the indicators of your high-performing teams. So, for example, uh, it's very clarifying the broad purpose why team exists. And then team members are committing to that purpose to work towards that objective. And then having teamwork, working with each other, strong leadership and inventing new methods in place. Very, very important there. I would say that this area in the MCS exam will be very, very important there. An exam question in the past has asked students to comment on persuading me whether or not the team will be high performing. Now, the way that we answer this type of question would simply be you need to tell the examining team about whether or not the purpose is quite clear, whether or not they commit to that purpose, and linking back to the unseen case will be important there. Now, uh, another view about the indicators of high-performing teams is that whether or not the numbers will be relatively small, limited duration, so you've got a purpose, fixed purpose. So, for example, when I'm marking the ACCA exam script, so we've got a team of markers there, and we've got the duration specified at what sort of standard and what we are starting and ending date and so on and so forth. So uh, it would imply that the team will be high performing, will be effective, which means meeting with the target and so on. 
There'll be potential exam scenarios for flat or from my perspective, it's not that very important. Uh, but the more important thing is that how this topic in the past has been examined. Again, it would be an open question again, but you need to tell the examining team about the direction of this. Uh, you're answering this way so you can score reasonable marks for your answer. For example, the question one from 2020 in the past, how to make the hotel managers understand the importance of working as the effective team, that you need to tell the examining team about the indicators of the high performing team. So for example, the past successes and having feedback and highlighting financial benefit and training workshops, you need to tell the examining team, you need to make hotel managers that yes, high performing team would be important because this would benefit the company quite a lot because if we've got certain characteristics from the past. For example, the indicators. Question two in the past saying, recommend with reasons the ways to improve the team's engagement. Okay, so instead of simply putting the indicators into your answer, but you need to tailor your answer to the specific task that you are given because your, your job is to solve the task and get marks from the examining team. So here, improving the design team engagement, we involve them quite early, having their feedback, and working with lots of other departments all together, and upgrade the skills, and also recognize the achievements by rewarding them. So yes, we can further engage them with our product development team members, and so on. So make sure that your answer seems to be quite practical and linking back to the unseen will be important now. Now, I'm going to be stopping the recording now for the chapter 4 for the core activity B area. In the C area, in chapter 5 onwards, I will see you in the next of our recording soon. Bye-bye. A-P-C, accounting for your future.